Hi everyone, welcome back to the How to Do It video series. Uh, we're in season three, of course, and what, what we, we sort of respond to requests and we get quite a number of requests for people asking, could we summarize uh, some of the strategies with, that we use in nutrition farming for chemical-free pest management? So I'm gonna do that at this point and talk about some of the options and some of the tools. I don't like constantly talking about products, but you know you can find other products comparable in some instances to some of the things I'll talk about because they're what we do. I'm, obviously, I'm going to talk about those products, but uh, it's concepts as much as anything. You can source from wherever you choose, um, which is always what we argue and uh, promote. Now, the starting point always, because we're talking about proactive pest management, and that's the difference between reactive uh, management of pests, which often involves coming in after the event with the big hammer, the big chemical hammer. And we're talking about, you know, trying to work towards a proactive approach. And the starting point, as we've touched upon many times before, is cell strength. Uh, and that, that concept that there are two minerals involved in cell strength, calcium and silica, equally important. And strengthening that cell wall gives you that protective barrier against the invasion of an invading hyphae from pathogens or from sap-sucking insects chewing through that cell wall. Both of these organisms, the, the, the disease organisms and the insects are seeking that yolk, that center of the cell, the cytoplasm, which is the food source. And these disease organisms can't start multiplying until they've got into a food source that sponsors their multiplication. So the very obvious thing is, okay, how can I strengthen the cell wall? And we've talked about calcium and silicon. I'm going to talk about a product that in 12 months has become our largest selling product globally. And it's based upon the three minerals, because we talk calcium and silica and there's a third player in there. And that third player is boron. And when we talk about cell strength and we talk about this very important armor-like substance uh, called calcium pectate that forms in the leaf and gives us that resistance should we have enough calcium in the equation, uh, boron is equally important as calcium and boron together that make calcium pectate. So calcium, boron, silica are a very, very important trio. Some would argue as important as NPK. And we decided to make a product based upon silica calcium, which you can't normally combine together because they're incompatible. You form insoluble calcium silicate. But we found a way to combine silica, calcium, and boron in a product called Silical B, which is that product there. We sell lots of it in 1,000 litre containers. Uh, people fertigate it. Um, some of my agronomy friends, agronomist friends uh, across the globe, particularly in Europe, they say it's their favourite, their most productive product. Uh, it is, uh, it's wonderful because it's delivering those three minerals. Now, when we talk about the relationship between that trio, uh, it's, you know, there's this suggestion that comes originally from Hugh Lovell that a foliar spray of boron at the end of winter, just, just before spring, uh, uh, basically that, that foliar spray can trigger the release, the solubility of some silica in the soil. Silica then, because it's involved in the, pathways, phloem and xylem are silica based. So this is the pathways into and around the plant. And we've got the slug chemical, the slug mineral calcium that is hard to move into the plant, hard to move around the plant. And when silica, uh, when, sorry, the boron releases the silica, the silica builds these pathways into and around the plant. Calcium, which is needed for cell division in spring, can move in and around that plant much more efficiently on those better nutrient, nutrient pathways. And so that's another sort of aspect of the relationship between calcium, boron and silica and combining the three in one substance, uh, which wasn't easy to achieve, but we've done it, uh, is a great concept. So that's the starting point. You strengthen the cell wall with calcium, boron and silica, and they are involved, all three of them are involved in that process. And that's the physical barrier that we're trying to achieve uh, to create that uh, more resilient plant. So that's uh, that's the physical chemistry side of the equation. Then we start talking about biology. My favorite partnering uh, of all the sort of microbial options um, is to, this is for fungal disease. My favorite partnering is to combine trichoderma 
and Bacillus subtilis together. Now they're compatible, and if you Google their various control mechanisms and what they can control, which trichoderma is over 30 different diseases, but they work in synergy. And there's a really powerful secret involved in utilizing uh, those material, those two, those two inoculums. For one thing, you can brew both of them. So we've, I've taught in previous, uh, I think I've taught both of them in terms of how you can multiply them. You can multiply trichoderma, you can multiply bacillus subtilis. So that makes it very inexpensive. But the secret with all of these biologicals is the concept uh, of sending them off to work with a lunchbox. And what we've found to be particularly effective is a product called BricsFix. And I think we've got some of it here somewhere. Um, where is it? Oh, there it is here. So BricsFix is the product. And BricsFix is kelp, fulvic acid, and this wonderful natural plant growth promotant called triacontinol. And there turns out to be a synergy between those three, but we're using basically the food source uh, for the bacillus subtilis is fulvic acid, the most powerful food source. So the fulvic component in there is for the bacillus and kelp, of course, is the favorite food of fungi. So trichoderma is the fungi. So we've got the two food sources and of course the trichotinol is an add-on that gives a lovely plant growth response because it's a natural plant growth promotant that enhances every aspect of photosynthesis. So we're gonna use a little bit of Brixfix uh, with our combination of Trichoshield, and our, in our case, the product's called Trichoshield. I think it's here somewhere. Uh, Trichoshield, that's our Trichoderma product. There are other, other products on the market. Uh, and our product Bacillus, it's called B-Sub. This is based on Bacillus subtilis. Again, you can multiply them or you can use them straight. But that combination, we find, controls about 80% of fungal diseases. So that, it's a really, really effective. You send it off to work with that lunchbox, Brixfix, Trichoshield, and B-Sub together to give you that really diverse control of a variety of different organisms. Now let's talk about a few other players in that scenario. We've talked about using your Brewstar Brewer uh, to, to brew an anaerobic brew. And of course, what we find is that BAM uh, tends to have a whole bunch of things in there that control diseases. We've mentioned the concept previously for powdery mildew, for example, of combining milk and BAM together, and it's a wonderful control of powdery mildew. But BAM helps with a whole variety of diseases. Uh, it boosts plant immunity and actually literally uh, some of the organisms in there can actually defend against several organisms. So BAM is going to be one of the players in that equation. Um, I think we've talked previously about, let me have a look here, um, wood vinegar. And we've talked about what wood vinegar is. Of course, it's when you make biochar, um, the smoke from the biochar in that enclosed container uh, is, is captured and condensed. So it's a smoke condensate. Uh, the reason for the word vinegar is because part of the 200 compounds that were in that wood that you burnt, that are now the volatile compounds that are in the smoke and are now, you're now condensed back into a liquid, part of that liquid is acetic acid because it's found on all wood as it's found in all plants for that matter. Uh, and so hence the term wood vinegar, it's just one of 200 plus compounds in there. Now, one of those compounds of particular interest is this concept of that the Aboriginal word for smoke is carrick. And we all know that the idea of coal burning, part of the benefit from that uh, historically with their 60,000 year old tradition was that there are a whole range of native species that only germinate in the presence of smoke. Well, what's been found now that now they've, they've termed the compounds of wood vinegar, of course, some of those same compounds responsible for that, but they've termed that group of biochemicals caracans after the Aboriginal word smoke. And what's been found is that these caracans will actually trigger and speed germination of everything, not just natives. They're actually a powerful group of biochemicals. And so it becomes a wonderful seed treatment uh, that kicks off that plant and gives you that nice healthy plant right from the start really inexpensive at the rates that you use it for, for seed treatment, but really, really powerful in terms of enhancing germination and kickstarting a healthy plant. But of course, there, is, there are reports of control of things like lice on chicken and uh, a variety of, it seems to have a repelling effect on insects. It's got a repelling effect on snails and slugs. Uh, so it's another control mechanism that we can use, a natural control mechanism that we can use uh, as part of our armory. I mean, my, my process on my farm is to throw enough mud at the wall till, and eventually it sticks. And sometimes you don't know what the hell worked, but you're happy it did. Now, this year on my apple farm, my entomologist said, look, this is one of the best crops in the whole town. We've done so well. 
really, really healthy crop with minimum pest and disease pressure. And then we got a hailstorm and it took out half of that beautiful crop and it tore the tail netting to pieces. And then three days later, we got a second one that took out 90% of what was left and all of the rest of the hail netting. So, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars with the losses and that's farming. I don't know, I'm a determined bastard. I, I don't give up, but um, it's there's every year there's some kind of drama. And I honestly, all it does is make me more aware of, of, of just how difficult it is. And for me, it's not, I'm not determined. I mean, I've got a large company and we can write off some of those losses, but I feel for those that haven't got that basis. And all it does is make me want to help farmers more uh, experiencing the hardships of farming because there's nothing harder. You can do it perfect. And we did do it as good as we could do it with no chemicals, a wonderful outcome. And then bang, it's all gone. Uh, and there's no other industry that where you're that reliant, where it's that much of a gamble really, because you can do everything perfectly and it's not easy to do and then have it all taken from you. And it's not happened one year, it's happened several years. So it's difficult, but fun. I love it still. Um, so so that's, uh, that's wood vinegar. Now, um, the other concept strategically is this concept of building bricks levels. Now I've talked about this before. Uh, I've talked about the concept of lifting, using a little tool called a refractometer, squeeze a bit of plant sap on this little sawn off telescope, the light refracts through the dissolved solids in the sap and you're measuring dissolved solids, you're measuring the percentage of solids present. You're measuring your skills as a chlorophyll manager effectively. Uh, and it's called degrees, people think it's percentage of bricks, but it's called degrees of bricks. And the finding is you want to be above 12 for most crops and above eight for root crops like potatoes. But the higher, the better. And we've measured things as high as, well, it go off the charts. It only measures to 32 uh, in some instances, but my goodness, they're wonderful crops when you achieve that. So that concept of lifting your bricks level, because if you can get above 12 for most crops, there's an, an absolute proven link to increased insect, particularly insect resistance that comes with that bricks level. And that's why we developed that product that I mentioned a little earlier, uh, the product called Bricks Fix, uh, because we see, and, and, and all three of those things, and the synergy between tricontinal, fulvic acid and kelp, there's something that works between them that we've, we just noted in some of our research, um, that that will lift BRICS levels. And that's why we call it BRICS fix. We want to lift those BRICS levels. And the higher you can get your BRICS levels, the greater your resistance against insects. And that's, you know, a, a proven fact. So uh, you won't see an exception. You'll never see an exception. You've got a paddock filled with insect pressure here and a paddock with with no insect pressure or much less insect pressure, and the insect pressure will have the low bricks levels. Not sometimes, always. And that will convince you of the validity of lifting bricks levels and, and, and achieving that better insect resistance. So that's lifting bricks levels. And when we talk about the minerals involved in that, I mean, this is stimulants that lift bricks levels with kelp and fulvic and tricontinol. But when we talk about the minerals, the first two minerals we look at are calcium and phosphate. And that's why poly spray calcium, because it's so poorly uptaken, poorly translocated and poorly uptaken. It's the slug of all minerals. Poly spray calcium is just a no brainer for almost every crop, even broad acre crops. You can do that as simply as two kilos of calcium nitrate with 300 grams of fulvic acid powder create a calcium fulvate. And that's a really inexpensive folia. We're talking $3 or $4 a, a hectare uh, for that calcium hit. Uh, and you've got a little bit of nitrogen in there as well, but, but a really, really nice response uh, with a calcium folate that you can create yourself. I mean, we sell these products, but you can make them yourself really effectively. Uh, and that takes care of the calcium. And when we talk about the silica component, we talked about silical B, but that's not a foliar. This is something you put through liquid inject, you can put it on seed, and of course you can fertigate it in horticulture, and many, many people do. It's become our largest selling product. But if you want to go in through the leaf and have that response, then there's a, an, another product, and that product's called Photo Finish. I'm not sure whether we've got any Photo Finish present here. Oh, yes, we have. Uh, photo Finish. And this is based on the soluble form of silica called potassium silicate. Um, and basically, the combination of potassium silicate with a whole bunch of stimulants that further increase the uptake and sort of buffer because it's quite hot. It's got a high pH and so you're buffering any burning effect. 
Having said that, you only dilute it at sort of one to 150, or even one to 200. So on Broadacre and 100 litres that you're putting out, you're only going to use like maximum 700 mils per hectare. So it's quite cost effective. But, you know, we, when we talk about silica polyspray, this instant response, you can have lodging where you push a pad, you push down part of your wheat crop and it stays down and you can spray this on, it goes, it's basically, and then you can, after spraying it, three days after spraying it, you can come in there and push it down and it goes zoink. And you push it down and it goes zoink. It's that powerful for cell strength uh, and for stem strength, uh, the concept of foliar super available silica, which you don't get from the soil applied. It takes a day or two, this instant when you poly spray photo finish uh, for a soluble silica source. Okay, thanks for listening.